Hello, I'm Chris McCarthy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this media briefing from ACS Spring 2022. In many cuisines, okra serves as a master thickener for stews and soups. The goo that comes from that fruit and other plants like aloe, cactus, and psyllium can also clean water and wastewater of some types of solid pollutants, as well as some that are dissolved. Now, scientists are reporting at the ACS meeting that combinations of these food grade plant extracts can also remove microplastics from water. We're joined today by Dr. Rajani Srinivasan from Tarleton State University. Thanks for joining us. Hi, greetings everyone. So uh, as someone who's used many of these ingredients in, in the kitchen, I was curious to know uh, what inspired you to think of okra or tamarind as, as a substance that could combat microplastic pollution. Um, my research focus or my PhD work that I was working on was to use some of these materials or plant-based materials, which are non-toxic, food grade, to go ahead and use them for removal of various pollutants from the water. So that uh, gave us an idea, why not use, as I was explaining before, that these materials, for example, like psyllium, we use it as a laxative. What do they do? They actually go ahead and remove what we don't want in our body, right? And then it takes off from our body. Exactly the same. Why not? We thought, why not we go ahead and use this for removal of various pollutants and contaminants from water, which makes them polluted and is harmful for the ecosystem and for the human beings. So currently, how what, what materials are used for, for uh, cleaning wastewater in this way? Uh, the, uh, there are several commercially available uh, polymers which are being used. One of those uh, is polyacrylamide. There's another one which is uh, your polydyne. So uh, these are synthetically made. And the problem with them is uh, when they degrade or when they are broken down, they, they break down into smaller particles, which are harmful. Some of them are carcinogenic in nature or cancer causing. And so these food grade um, substances or substances coming from food grade plant extracts would have less of the issues that would uh, in breaking down? Yes, so the plant-based materials that I'm using in these uh, for, for the removal of pollutants are, you all know what carbohydrates are, right? The carbs, okay. So these are polysaccharides, which are made up of carbohydrates. So that means when you go ahead and take the smaller carbohydrates, put them together or the sugars, they become polysaccharides, right? Saccharides means sugar. So maximum when these polymers, they degrade the plant-based materials that I'm using, they're going to convert into carbohydrates or glucose. How harmful can they be? So that was the major focus or that was the major motivation that, uh, that gave us or that, that made us make this uh, choice um, because we don't want to add more pollutants into the water or toxic substances to the water just in order to clean it, right? So that was the whole uh, goal of this particular research. So how did you go about investigating this? Um, what we did was, uh, again, we, we, we buy these raw materials from the grocery store, it is available. And again, it's not, that means it can be used in developing as well as develop, that means developed countries, right? So it is, it is easily available. You can just go to the grocery store. Well, I'm not saying that if you have to produce it in a larger amount, you just do it from, but if we go ahead and get that from the grocery store for now, and then we make it in the lab for now, like just by soaking them overnight and then extracting the polymer from them. And then we go, uh, we go ahead and remove any type of uh, contaminants that it might have and then dry them and keep it in the fridge. They have a high shelf life. Then what we do here is, again, these can be used as a solid as well as an emulsion. So uh, then in order to uh, go ahead and remove, I'm just going to keep this in the context of microplastics for now. Uh, so what we do here is we run some batch experiments in the lab. We collect water samples 
from uh, different various sources like seawater and then your surface water. And presently I'm working with groundwater. We have also gotten water samples from estuaries, river. So we buy, bring those samples. So in the beginning, what we did was we made a simulated water sample in the lab because we don't want several unknowns present. So we, we, we went ahead and bought some microplastics, which are polystyrene beads, which is being used in biology a lot. Uh, and we use that in our everyday life, different types of microplastics, right? So our drinking water uh, bottles, and then like you can see uh, several poly uh, micro, sorry, plastics around. And then what we do here is we make this water uh, consisting of these microplastics. And then we uh, run the experiments by using different doses of the polymers and then investigate before and after adding and see uh, how much of these microplastics has been removed during the process. And then we see that under the microscope, well, just to let you all know, microplastic is the emergent contaminant. Still scientists around the world, they are trying to find the best or a standard way of detecting them. But what we did was we used the, since you know, I, have a, I was working with microorganisms and I was also working with uh, cancer research. So that's another one that I'm working with where I count the cells uh, or the microorganism under the microscope using hemocytometer. So these are also micros, that means smaller, which we can't see from our eyes. So we thought, why not use that method for detecting the, um, uh, the type of microplastics that we are having? And that's how we went ahead and used the method to find before and after, and that's how it went. So there's, there's been a lot of research uh, about the prevalence of, of microplastics and in food and in water and things that we consume. And, What's the danger of, of these microplastics? Why, why do we want to fight this form of pollution? We are aware that plastics have been used for a long time. They have been our friends for a long time. We have been using them for a lot of purposes to carry things around, to package the food, the dress we wear. They also have uh, plastics in them. As long as they are intact and they are big enough, if they are present in the water or any other place, we can easily remove them. But if they are broken down, so microplastics are nothing but these plastics, when they uh, go over different mechanical processes, when they flow and they come in contact with rocks and other things, they break down into smaller particles and now we can't see them. Since they are so small, and again, as already described, these are um, particles less than five millimeters in size, what they can do here is they can easily go ahead and get into our digestive system. It's not only human beings, including aquatic organisms and other organisms present. They ingest that via food, via water. And since these are organic in nature, they can absorb a lot of other organic pollutants which are present, which are called as the persistent organic pollutants and emerging pollutants, they get into our water, they are toxic to our body, so they get inside our body and they are toxic in nature, uh, as a result of which they cause different types of diseases, uh, which is harmful in the long run. So that's why microplastics are dangerous in nature. We have seen in several documentaries, now it's a very hard topic, uh, that microplastics are creating a lot of problems. So that's why it is significant to go ahead and remove the microplastics or treat them when they are in the water or food, whatever it is. But right now the focus is towards removal of uh, microplastics from water. So that's what we are trying to do in this case is remove, uh, I know scientists are working around, uh, working in order to find out a method to detect them using standard methods, but we thought uh, why not we go ahead and be trying to remove these materials from the water so that we have a safe drinking water without any toxic substances added on the top of what is already present in the water. Great, thank you. So um, 
you know, you, you talked a little bit about this and you can go to the grocery store and get these, but what about scaling this up for uh, industrial use? Um, are there, would there be ob uh, obstacles to implementing that? Well, we don't, I don't envision a lot of obstacles in that because some of them, like for example, your tamarind, it's already available in the stores. I mean to say uh, tamarind, not the raw material that I'm talking about, but the uh, uh, that is the polysaccharide or the gums that I'm using, it is already available. So I know that the other materials that I'm using, they are not available, commercially available yet, but I'm pretty sure if I can get a company to go ahead and work with me, it's very simple to make them. You don't need like complex mechanism. If I can make it in the lab, I'm pretty sure a company can go ahead and make it in the lab. So yes, it is scalable and it is possible to go ahead and scale it up. Uh, and it is economical to use them also. And it sounds like uh, they're a safer alternative to other products we're currently using. Yes, and the other advantage of using uh, these materials or put it into practice is you don't need any complex infrastructure to be built. It can be used in the existing infrastructure that is being present. You just replace the synthetic ones that you are using, and then you can just use these materials instead of that, and there you go. Great. Um, so what should viewers take away from, from this work? What I would say is in order to go ahead and remove a microplastic or any other type of materials, we should be using natural materials, which are non-toxic. As I told you before, we don't want to add extra toxic substances to go ahead and clean up what is already uh, which, is, which is already having a pollutant present or removing the waste materials from the water and have safe drinking water. Yes. Thank you so much, Rajani, uh, for sharing your research with us. Thank you. Be sure to check out our other media briefings for ACS Spring 2022, which will be posted throughout the meeting at www.acs.org slash ACS Spring 2022 briefings.